Hello, and welcome to Sovereign Financials, financial education for everyone. Hi guys, welcome back to another week of Sovereign Financials. Before we get to the current content for this week, I just want to make a quick announcement. Sovereign Financials, we released our first newsletter January 3rd of this year. It is live now. Every month, we're going to be publishing two newsletters. One will be the bigger newsletter in the beginning of the month, and then there'll be a mid-month update as well that kind of just goes over whatever changes there are. The first part of each newsletter, which I have here, Sovereign Financials, Volume 1, Issue 1, the big parts of this is the big picture kind of looks at the current macroeconomic trends and where we think the stock market and the rest of the markets are going in the near term future. There'll be a section on market analysis, looking at the current stock market, bond market, real estate market, and also cryptocurrencies, evaluating them and making our investments for where we think we could make money in the future as well. We'll have a section on financial charts, which are all the charts that are important to look at for near term investments. And then we'll have a couple sections on the stocks that we pick, the cryptocurrencies we pick, and how we put them together in our own portfolios. All right, now let's go ahead and get back to the, the meat of all of this, looking at the data published by the California Association of Realtors. And you can read that right up here. I'm picking California this month, and then next month I'll try to pick another state and look at how the sales are doing there. I looked at New York a little bit and also Texas. You guys aren't coming down quite yet. So if we look here, this is the California single family homes and looking at their sales. So October 2018, the prices in average were 572,000. And then in November, just one month later, prices did drop to a median home price of 554,000. So month over month change is negative 3%. So basically house prices went down by 3% in California as a total from October to November. Now, December data isn't out quite yet, but when it is, I'll go ahead and publish that for you guys' information as well. If you look at, compare November's data from an entire year ago, from November 2017, home prices are only up by 1.5%. So, you know, people say home prices go up by 6 Some people are crazy and think like 13% a year. And that's true during bubbles, but during the milling out of a bubble, so, you know, a bubble starts going up like this, you have large home price increases, it kind of evens out, and then things start heading down. We've been having decreasing home prices for the, since essentially August of 2018, if you looked at my previous videos. So in the beginning of the year, there was a big home price increase kind of topped off. And then starting in August, we've just been headed down now in California. If you take a look at a couple other things here, you know, so in general, Los Angeles metropolitan area is down a little bit, just by 0.8%. San Francisco Bay is down by 5.6%. And a lot of the rest of the markets other than that part is, is flat. But if we break some of these things down here, so looking at the San Francisco Bay Area, Marin County is down by 20%. So, I mean, this is obviously very expensive homes, but, you know, $1.4 million. And then home price, the average, or excuse me, the median home price dropped to $1.17 million. 20% decrease month over month. If you look at the change over the past year, from a year ago, it's down almost 5%. And then San Francisco down month over month, just a one month decrease, it went down by almost 10%, right? But once again, this is like the very upper end of real estate. You know, San Mateo is down by 5.5%, Santa Clara down by 3%, and Sonoma down by almost 6%. Now, if you look at Southern California, Los Angeles was down by 10% in just one month. So in October, the median home price was $614,000. And then just one month later, the median home price is $553,000. So it's a nice decrease there in just one month. The 10% drop in one month is, is quite significant. Home prices compared to November of last year is still up by 4%. But like I said, you know, we came up early in the year, January, February of 2018 was very strong. And then, you know, in July, things kind of started topping off. And then in August, things have been headed down. I mean, a 10 month drop from October to November is pretty significant too, because both of those are kind of in the fall months where people aren't really looking for homes anyways, but it's not from, you know, let's say July where everyone's trying to buy a house because that's a good time for the market to, to August where less people are looking for houses. So a 10% drop in one month is, is pretty significant. San Diego in the past one month is down by 1.5% and then Ventura is down by 1%. Central coast wise, I think the biggest one here to look at is Santa Barbara. They're down by 16.5% in just one month. So October, it was $659,000 for 
your median home, and then in November is $550,000. Basically, a $100,000 drop for these homes in Santa Barbara in just one month, right? It's pretty huge. If you look at it, compare it to November of 2017, so from a year ago, the median house was $742,000. So from $742,000 last November to $550,000 this November is a whopping 25% loss in just the one year, price decrease in just one year. It's pretty big. Central Valley, I'm not gonna go over all these, you know, but just a couple of them, like Glenn's down 11%, Fresno's down 2%, and most of the other ones are down by two to 3% in the Central Valley. There's a bunch of other counties too, I won't go over all the other ones, but you know, um, some, some counties are doing well. I don't know how big the houses are. I mean, here, this house is only $184,000. So I'm assuming these counties are, pr are pretty small and uh, the, the, the changes are pretty variable. Now, the California Realtors Association also publishes this PowerPoint with a couple of slides. So this is California, oops. So I'm not sure what happened there, I can't bring that up. But California home sales declining trend. So if you look at here, the, this is for the entire California, you can see that the number of sales has been declining. And if you look at the yellow, that's year over year changes. If you look at this, we dropped pretty significantly, we're basically almost at negative 10%. And the last time this happened was in 2012, 2013. And that was essentially gonna be another bear market here. But then we had quantitative easing, which injected a bunch of money into the market. And then we had a rally in home prices. So now we're having quantitative tightening instead of easing, meaning the government's not printing more money. So if you assume that this isn't gonna happen again where the government prints a bunch of money to rally the market, the last time you've had this was in 2009, 2010, which was the popping of the real estate bubble. This is specifically looking at Southern California. Home sales drop off double digits. So here again, negative 10%. Last time this happened was in 2013 when we had quantitative easing to save us. But now we're doing the exact opposite. We're having quantitative tightening, meaning the government's not printing money, allowing treasury yields to, or treasury bonds to roll off. So I don't think we're gonna have the same recovery like we did in 2013. If you go back further, last time we were at these levels was once again the 2010-2011 housing bubble. This is a pretty interesting graph here too. Active listings is up eighth consecutive month. So looking at the total number of houses being sold that are currently active, people are trying to sell them. In the past eight months, we've had this rally of people trying to sell their houses, right? So a bunch of people are trying to sell their homes. They're not selling, so the, list, the listing is staying active. And this is kind of building up over time. But if you look back here, you know, early 2018, 2017, 2016, and most of 2015, there was not, there's a decrease in active listings, meaning that somebody would put their house on the market and it would sell, and people that had their homes on the markets were just selling. So the total number of acti people actively trying to sell their homes was actually decreasing every month. And now you've had this rally eight months in a row where there's more and more active listings. So as more people try to sell their homes and you have this rally here and people trying to sell their homes, now there's more competition to sell your homes. And that takes us into our next graph, which is 42.5% of listings have had price reductions. So people are competing to sell their homes, they can't sell them, so then they're forced to lower their prices to make their home more competitive on the market. Now, price reductions is a cyclical, a, a cyclical thing because you know, in the summer, it's very easy to sell a home, or I should say it's much easier to sell a home as people are moving, schools aren't in session. So that's when people are looking to buy homes, right? They're looking to move. So in the summertime, there's less price uh, home reductions as there's more competition for it and more buying. When winter comes around, less people are trying to buy homes and therefore there's more price decreases as people try to sell their homes. And then summer comes around, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. You have summer again, and then, you know, actually this is still summer right here. This shouldn't be going up quite yet. But with that being said, even though we're in winter now where you would expect the most amount of price reductions to happen, we haven't been at 42% price reductions for a very long time. So I don't know if it's, let me draw a line here. Yeah, it's not gonna let me draw a line, unfortunately. But if you just bring this across here, if you look at 2017, none were at this level, 2016, none were at this level, 15, 14, 13, and really the last time we were in the 40% was 2011, which like I said, once again, was the bottom of the housing market after the housing bubble burst. So just some interesting information to look at in terms of the California markets. I will start looking at Texas and New York probably uh, during our next video here. 
you know, Texas is going to have issues because as people are leaving New York and California due to the increase in taxes and all the other conflicts that blue states have, you know, they're moving to Texas. So I think Texas is going to keep going up even as this bubble starts to pop. The national realtors data isn't out yet for even for December of 2018. And I think they're going to publish Q3 soon, but Q4 definitely isn't published. So as soon as I have the Q4 data, which is basically the home prices and the sales data and statistics for the entire country of the U.S. Once I have that data, I'll go ahead and make a video and post that as well. So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like the video, if you could push like, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell next to the subscribe thing so that you know when I have a new video up. And if you want to check the comments section for my website, it's sovereignfinancials.com. I publish a newsletter twice a week. It's going to be packed with good investing information and how to take advantage of you know a downtrending market. And then obviously once the bear market is finalized, how to also profit from it as it starts to increase again. Really good information. You know, check it out. Let me know what you think. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.